Before I get started, I want to mention that everything I'm going to be showing today is running live on in our Leap cloud. I'm actually running this demo out of our online integrated developer environment. So everything you're going to see today is all being done on our production systems in real time. So here's the problem I'd like to solve. Imagine that I'm in a uh, natural disaster style scenario or any other distribution scenario really, where I have a central location with a set of supplies. And I would like to distribute those supplies to a collection of different locations nearby. So here, I'm going to be looking at a map of Rockhampton. Um, and I have my central location. And then I have a collection of different places nearby that need supplies. So say water, food, other supplies, maybe say medicine or blankets or, or really anything. And I would like to, using a fixed number of vehicles, distribute those supplies as cheaply and easily as possible. So just to get the idea, let's do a quick example. So here, I'm going to be using two drones to deliver to 10 different locations. And when I do that, uh, what I should see is that each of those two drones, oh, here we go, each of those two drones, you know, behaves the way that you would expect. You know, you can see that this route looks approximately right. Um, you know, they haven't done any crazy moves where the drones are, you know, zigzagging all over the map. They've gone to the different locations and, and successfully delivered the supplies. I want to mention that this type of problem, this uh, multi-vehicle routing problem, is an incredibly difficult problem. In fact, uh, mathematicians, if you're familiar with this sort of thing, or computer scientists, will recognize this as an NP-hard problem. This is the kind of problem where for every uh, location I add, for every type of supply I add, for every type of vehicle I add, the problem becomes exponentially harder. And that can take you know, day, uh, hours, days, or you know, even weeks to solve these sorts of problems. So these are, these are very, very difficult optimization problems. So you know, I ran this example. It's small, used two, you know, two drones. Drones are, in some sense, a best case scenario, right? They go in straight lines. They, they don't have to worry about traffic. They don't have to worry about uh, you know, taking, not driving through buildings. They don't have to worry about you know, uh, the conditions on the road or weather. Or maybe they have to worry about weather. But you know, they don't, there's a lot of simplifications there. So let's make this problem a bit harder. Um, first off, I'm going to use trucks, um, not drones. And second, instead of di distributing to, say, 10 locations, I'm going to distribute to, say, 70. Um, and instead of two vehicles, I'm going to use six. So let's go ahead and, and run this problem. So when I'm using trucks, the problem becomes more complicated because no longer are the distances just between any two points. The distances are along streets. You know, I have to obey traffic laws. I have to handle other sorts of things. But I'll mention that here we're using just distance as our cost function, but this formulation that we're using can accept really arbitrary costs. So you could encode, for instance, that you don't want some areas are more dangerous to travel in than others, or maybe you could encode uh, how much expected traffic there is. Maybe you could encode um, that some trucks are uh, less uh, less well maintained than others. All of these different costs can be encoded into the problem. So taking a look at our solution. You can see that, again, um, I mean, the solution is a lot more complex. We had a lot more locations and a lot more trucks. But again, you, know, you can see that, that we've successfully delivered to all those locations. And it looks approximately right. The trucks aren't doing anything really crazy. They're even you know, doing nice things like going around traffic circles, just like we would expect. And in fact, if I scroll down a little bit, um, I can see some more data about the problem. I can see how far each of the individual trucks went. So this truck one went 3.6 kilometers. Uh, truck two went 3.8. Uh, truck, and, and then in total, we went about 20 kilometers. So finally, I want to you know, ask the question like, OK, can we run this thing classically? So I'm going to run this now uh, on a classical solver. Specifically, I'm going to use uh, an algorithm called k-means clustering, which is a, a state-of-the-art algorithm in this, in this problem space. Um, and I'm going to you know, just compare the results. So uh, running on k-means, what we should see is, yep, there we go. Um, again, you know, it's found a solution to the problem, and it looks approximately right. You know, no, none of the trucks are doing anything really crazy, although I do see the green one is doing some kind of interesting things here. But if we scroll down, what we'll see is that instead of going just 20 kilometers total, we went 27. So, you know, you can see right away that by using our hybrid solver, um, you're able to get a solution that is better than this classical comparison. Now, this isn't a benchmark study I've just done. I've just done sort of an anecdotal thing as part of, as part of my demo. 
Um, but I want to mention that you know, we're really interested in building these sorts of uh, building problems around this and using real data to compare for you whether classical or quantum is better or whether classical or hybrid is better and where hybrid might provide benefit to, to your problem. So just to summarize, I've talked about this multi-vehicle routing problem and how it can be used to solve a lot of different problems. So say again, in a disaster prepared in a disaster situation or maybe just more benignly, I want to deliver groceries. Um, and I've shown our ability to encode different types of constraints, so say drones or trucks, um, but I can do other things as I mentioned. I've also shown that we can solve this problem at a fairly realistic scale where you know, I have uh, 70 locations and six different trucks. And, and in fact, with our hybrid solvers, we can go much larger than that. So I hope you've walked away uh, with the understanding that we can be accessing this problem with hybrid, getting real results on a real scale today. So thanks all, uh, appreciate your time.